William Faulkner once described intelligence as the ability to survive in one's environment. In our fast-paced, high-tech world, one of the necessary skills for survival is word processing. If computers confuse or frighten you, consider this. If you intend to live and work in the latter decade of the 20th century and into the 21st century, chances are excellent that you'll be using word processing. You may have already been told by one or more of your instructors that you'll be required to use a simple word processing program to complete the assignments for that course. Don't panic. The term word processing may sound like some strange and exceedingly difficult skill, but it is merely a complicated term for a simple activity. In fact, word processing has been around in some form since the beginning of recorded history. In early history, humans used clay tablets to record sales and contracts. If they needed to change an entry, it was easy to do as long as the clay was damp. By the time of Julius Caesar, the Romans were using wax tablets for notepads. By using wax, they could wipe out mistakes and make corrections. Even a pencil can be considered a simple word processing instrument. Part of it is used for recording words or data. Another part is used for erasing mistakes. Additional changes and revisions are also possible. And that's basically the concept behind all the seemingly confusing bits and bytes and microchips in your PC, that is, your personal computer. It's simply a way of recording and correcting information so it can be presented in a clear format. Except, instead of being a mechanical process, like the clay or wax tablets, a pencil, or even a typewriter, it's electronic. Now that personal computers are so frequently used in offices, success-oriented business people can't hope to compete in the business world without understanding the use of word processing programs. Today's lesson is intended to acquaint you with the basics of word processing on a computer. However, it is not expected that you will be able to immediately sit down and work a computer, or even type a paper when you've completed this lesson. What we do expect is that you will be familiar enough with the terminology and the functions of a keyboard so that you can sit down to a computer and begin to practice with a word processing program. Since PCs, as well as major word processing programs, are still fairly expensive, by all means, take advantage of the equipment available at your school. Your college is providing you with an equalizer to help you succeed in the job market as well as in the classroom. By working with word processing now, you will be better prepared for your future job. Hi, how are you? Fine, how are you? Fine, thank you. I see from your resume that you have word processing skills. Yes, I do. I've been working for several years on the IBM, and recently I picked up the Macintosh, and I've been working in a couple of programs. You can that. think of the computer like a human brain. Both are capable of performing many different tasks, from computing income tax deductions to spelling. However, your brain wasn't always able to do this. Though it was capable of figuring out math problems, your mind couldn't perform these functions until it was taught or programmed how to do so. In the same way, a computer needs instructions to perform certain tasks. For a computer, the instructions come by way of a program. The program tells the computer what rules to follow, just as your knowledge of English tells your brain how to write a letter to your friend. Just as you have had several different teachers over the years, computers have several different programs. Each program is stored on a disk. This is called software. As the name might suggest, word processing programs or different kinds of software enable your computer to perform various kinds of writing skills. Depending on the type and complexity of the program, it can direct your computer to type, delete, move whole paragraphs, even check for spelling and grammatical errors. 
Some application programs are built in or have already been put into the computer's memory. If this is the case with the computer you're using, you will need a floppy disk only for your data. Otherwise, you will need two disks, one for the program and one for your data. In the learning lab or computer lab, you can find a simple word processing program. These programs have various names, just as books have different titles, even if they are written on the same subject. A word processing program is as simple to use as a tape recorder, and in many ways, they perform similar functions. Word processors use a disk or diskette, which is flexible and works like a record. Only instead of recording music or voices like a record or tape, disks are used to store data or documents. Floppy disks come in several sizes, most commonly three and a half and five and a quarter inches. This is a magnetic media which must be protected from damage. If you are not careful when handling and storing your disks, you may lose your data. Avoid extreme heat or cold and exposure to magnetic fields. Just as a tape plays recorded music back through a speaker, a diskette recalls the information stored and prints it on a screen. To use either machine, of course, you have to turn it on. You must also insert the disc or diskette into the machine. With a music tape, you sometimes fast forward to a particular song or section that you especially like. And with a word processing program, you need to select what you want to see and work with on the screen. When recording music on an audio tape, you have to use specific buttons. Likewise, in order to record information on a disc, you have to type in specific instructions called commands. However, there are many more commands for computers than there are for tape recorders. In addition to the command for saving or recording information, there are, for example, print commands for formatting the page you're typing, how wide to make the margins, how many spaces to skip between lines. There are commands for copying information and commands for moving information around and commands for finding specific words and changing them and on and on. Do not worry about trying to memorize all the commands and all the steps we're discussing. You will find that every program contains a mini lesson which will teach you how to use the software you have step by step. Every program also contains a help function to assist you at any point, should you get confused or stuck, or simply forget which keys perform what functions. In order to understand how to give a command, let's look at the keyboard of a computer. Notice that most of the keys on a keyboard resemble a typewriter. In addition to the letters and numbers, however, computers have a few special keys. ESC stands for escape which may serve as a panic button. If you want to stop whatever you're doing, or if you gave the wrong command and need to bail out in a hurry, you can hit Escape. The button marked CTRL, or Control, gives you, as you might think, control over what the computer does. It is the Command button. Specific commands vary from program to program, but in general, hitting the Control button in conjunction with another key will tell your computer to perform a special function, such as delete a sentence or paragraph, or save a file. Not all computers label the keys in the same way. On an Apple computer, for example, the control key is often used along with a key denoted by an apple. The apple lets the user know that this key performs certain specific functions. Also on the keyboard, you may notice arrow or directional keys. These keys allow you to move the cursor, the blinking mark that notes your place, up or down or left or right on the screen. On a typewriter, you do this mechanically by moving the carriage around. But on a computer, you have no paper or carriage to move. Instead, you move the electronic place marker or cursor. The cursor helps you keep track of where you are working on the screen. 
so the directional arrows move the cursor up and down and to each side to allow you to back up and correct information or move forward and type. The delete key, as you might guess, lets you delete the previous letter or letters similar to the way you would make a correction on a typewriter. There are other ways to delete larger blocks of information, whole sentences, or even entire paragraphs, which vary according to the software package you use. In some programs, you use the control key with a specific letter key to delete large blocks of information, while the delete key is more like a quick correction button. There's also a key called enter or return, depending on the kind of computer you're using. Like the return key on a typewriter, the return or enter key on a computer moves the cursor to the next line. This key has a second function as well. Occasionally, when you're typing a command, the way you tell the computer to start doing whatever you told it to do is to hit the enter or return key. This is like a period at the end of a sentence. It tells the computer you're done with the instructions and now it can begin to carry them out. If you've ever used an electronic banking machine, you've already applied this concept. After you tell the banking machine how much money you want to withdraw, you press enter to enter the information into the brain of the machine. Now that we've studied the keyboard, let's take a closer look at the screen of the computer. Think of this screen as a blank sheet of paper or a wax tablet. To understand the information on your screen, you need to know three terms and what they mean. The first term is menu. Just as a dinner menu shows the selection of food available in a particular restaurant, the computer menu shows the array of tasks your computer can perform. The tasks listed on the menu are your options, which is the second new term we need to know. Options are choices. On a computer, you can choose only one option at a time. Let's choose the file option. Just as we store pieces of information in a manila folder and file it away with other folders, a computer stores information in an electronic folder called a file. Every time you type a letter or essay or research paper on your computer, you begin by opening or starting a new file. When you've finished, you save the file just as you put a manila folder away in a filing cabinet. In order to find a folder again, you give it a label before storing it. And in order to be able to find a letter or essay stored in your computer, you need to label this file. It doesn't matter what you call your file, just be sure to give it a name that indicates what it contains. Notice that file names need to be descriptive, but they shouldn't be too long. Most computer programs have very specific rules about naming files. This program, for example, requires the operator to use no more than 15 letters or numbers to begin with a letter and will not accept a space or any character that is not a letter, number, or period. Be sure to check the specific requirements for naming files for your software program. Getting back to the menu then, let's choose the word file and see what happens. We are presented with a new menu at this point. Under the category file, we are able to choose from the following tasks. Opening a file. As we explained, you choose this option each time you start a new report or letter. It's like starting with a blank sheet of paper. Saving a file. That is, recording it on your disk. Clearing the file from the screen so you can work on a new file. Or printing the information in the file on paper. You will use all of these options in the course of writing a paper.
Let's say for now that you have already written the first draft of your paper and have saved it. Now you want to edit it. Under the category of edit, there are several more options. You can erase text, move it, undo your move, copy text, or find and replace text. Don't worry about how to perform these functions. That is explained in your software package, and it's different for different programs. For now, just be aware that these functions exist. As you begin to learn the capabilities of a computer, you will see that a word processing program can actually enable you to become a better writer and to produce a neater and more coherent paper. In the past, you may have had to turn in a paper in rough form because you didn't have time to make needed corrections and then retype the page. With a word processor, you can not only give your final paper a better appearance, you can also correct spelling and, in some cases, grammar. Let's take a look at the spell option on the computer and see how that works. Having a spell checker on a computer is like having a small dictionary committed to memory. Except this dictionary doesn't have definitions, only correct spellings. When you give your computer the command to look through your paper for spelling errors, the computer functions as a proofreader. Here, for example, we have misspelled the word neglect. The spell checker highlights the word to let us know the spelling is not correct. Some word processors offer one or more words which sound similar to the one you spelled incorrectly to suggest alternatives. However, a spell check function is not human. It cannot think or analyze the context in which you are using a word. This is especially true for homonyms, or words that sound alike but are spelled differently, such as here, H-E-R-E, -E, and here, H-E-A-R. If you use the wrong term but spelled it correctly, spell check will not pick it up. Let's look at an example. To be or not to be, that is the question. A spell check will not find anything wrong with this sentence, even though it has five misspelled words. The spell check will not alert you to problems because it doesn't understand the meaning of the sentence. If it did, it would know that T-W-O is the wrong form of two, and that B refers to a state of being, not an insect. As far as the computer is concerned, T-W-O is a valid spelling, and therefore it doesn't alert you to errors. Most proper names will be flagged as misspelled. Word processing dictionaries do not have the memory or storage space to hold the hundreds of thousands of most commonly used names. However, proper names that also represent common names can be checked. For example, Mr. Green will not be flagged as an incorrect spelling because green is also a color and is stored in the dictionary. But green spelled G-R-E-E-N-E -E -E will be. The more sophisticated word processing programs will also flag double occurrences of a word as misspelled. For example, the, the software was inoperable. The word the would be flagged as misspelled to avoid duplication. At this point, you may be wondering how you can actually use word processing in writing papers for your classes. More than likely, the process will entail most or all of the following steps. You may want to write your rough draft the old-fashioned way, longhand, so that you can get something onto paper without getting bogged down in the mechanical process of working a computer. But if you feel comfortable with a word processing program, you can begin right away on the computer. Entering your paper into the computer is like recording music on a tape, except you are saving it on a disc. After completing your first draft, you will run a hard copy. Hard copy refers to paper, something that you can hold in your hand, as opposed to reading it on the screen. By printing it out on paper, you can read your draft looking for any errors and ways to improve your writing. After correcting errors and making changes on the computer, you can run a second copy. Using a printout of the second draft, you can continue to revise the content of the paper. At this stage, you can check your paper for organization, structure, and development. 
following revisions run your final draft through the spell check and again proof it for typos. You can then print your final draft to turn in. Although the process of writing revolves around revising and revising and revising again, the beauty of a word processor is that you don't have to retype the whole paper each time you make changes. Unlike a typewriter, a computer requires that you type in only the corrections. It's an easy task, and it makes polishing your paper almost painless. Are there any pitfalls to word processing? Of course there are, just as there are with any method of writing. A pencil point may break. Ink may blot or smear. And a typewriter can run out of ribbon or have its keys jammed. Likewise, several accidents can befall a computer. Because a computer is electronic, the biggest concern is the possibility of losing all of your information, either erasing it by hitting the wrong key, losing it if the electricity goes out or the power surges, or by damaging or misplacing a disk. So the first precaution in word processing is to have a backup disk. You save your information on a disk and then much like you would make a second tape of your favorite recording, you save the information again on a separate disk. The second precaution is to save your information as often as possible while writing. Do not wait to save it until you are finished. A rule of thumb is to save what you are typing either every 10 minutes or after every paragraph. Saving frequently is a safeguard. If something does get erased accidentally, you will lose only a few paragraphs rather than an entire three hours of work. Remember too that every time you make a change, you must save the file again to record these changes. It's a good idea to have blank disks already formatted, ready and waiting when writing a paper. It's very frustrating to try to save and find that your disk is full and that you have no disks ready to use. To format or prepare a disk to receive data, you must follow the procedure for your computer and particular software. Don't be caught with a brilliant thought and know where to put it. If all this seems a little overwhelming, think back to the first time you learned how to drive a car with a stick shift. When you first got behind the wheel, you may have bucked down the road like you were busting Broncos in a rodeo. But after a while, it became a little smoother. Finally, there came a time when you were shifting gears without a hitch. Mastery of word processing skills doesn't come overnight, but it will come. No matter how much time it takes to learn, it is a small amount of effort compared to the enormous benefit you will receive. Word processing will eventually save you endless hours of labor once you know how. Be patient. You'll make a lot of mistakes at first, and it'll seem like you're trying to drive a Mack truck just across the street. But by the third sitting, you should become at least somewhat comfortable with all this new equipment, and you should be a little more ready to face the 21st century. Lesson Review. An electronic folder for storing information is called A, a file, B, a PC, C, a menu. The correct answer is A, a file. A display of the array of tasks your computer can perform is known as 
A, the commands. B, the menu. C, the cursor. The correct answer is B, the menu. In order to avoid accidental erasure, you should A, use a spell checker, B, save frequently, C, use the escape key. The correct answer is B, save frequently. A general term for computer programs or instructions stored on disks is A, hard copy, B, software, C, cursor. The correct answer is B, software. A printout on paper is also referred to as A, a file, B, the menu, C, hard copy. The correct answer is C, hard copy.